Hi, everybody. It's your girl, Osiris. What's up? Hey, it's another 15 minutes. You know we do it live on location. Today we have the wonderful pleasure of being in Pasadena, Old Town Pasadena, in Mills Alley, where we have, oh, I don't even know what to say. This man is world prestigious, renowned, famous jazz pianist. Mr. John Mayer, not to be confused with the J-O-H-N Mayer, this is the J-O-N Mayer. How are you today? I'm great, and I, yes, you're right, I am the original John Mayer. He's the pre, the other baby John Mayer. That guy's an imposter, <laughs> but, but we won't talk about that. That's right. So let's just jump right into some questions. You came, let's see, you were born in 1938 in New York City. Your mom was a classical jazz or classical music listener, performer, player. And she even played at night for you while you were asleep. I guess it got into your head, which led you into the prestigious music and art school of Manhattan. And then you went from being an alto to piano. What happened? I got tired of carrying an alto around. And uh, I had opportunities to play the piano and just put the put the horn down and uh, began to work on piano, th thinking this, this was a great uh, concept of not carrying anything around. But I didn't know that I was, had made a deal with the devil in doing that. <laughs> that deal being that, yeah, I don't have to carry anything around, but then, I, then again, I have to play piano-shaped objects everywhere. Not quite piano sometimes, but that's a whole other story. Yeah, so I, I I'm, became devoted to the piano. So where is the jump between the high school alto to piano and then all of a sudden you start appearing live in these clubs with all these prestigious people let's talk okay people for you kids out there that don't know Manhattan Transfer, Dion Warwick, Billy Higgins, Ron Carter, Sarah Vaughn should I keep going? Please <laughs> no. no you don't have to keep going uh, and your question again? How did you end up going from there to playing with all these famous people? Oh, well that's that's how life works. It's one foot in front of the other, in front of the other. And uh, um, growing up in New York, uh, coming out of that particular special high school, uh, gave me a lot of entree into young bands and, and uh, surrounded on all sides by the greatest music being made in the, in the, in the hotbed of, of jazz, New York City. So I, I was surrounded at the right time by the right people. And uh, I was good enough to be asked to play with so-and-so and then so-and-so heard me and uh, you know, it's, it's how people get hired from job to job. And I know that you ended up doing a John Coltrane album. Where do you guys come up with the concepts of how to name your songs? Like what, what determines, I know one of the songs was called Do It Like This. There was another one called Round Up All the Usual Suspects. What inspires you to come up with the name of these songs and the albums? Oh, well, I, love, I love great titles and, and people respond to great titles. Um, uh, do it like this, I'm not sure exactly how that came about, but I do remember Round Up the Usual Suspects. Uh, I was cutting my first CD with, happened to be with Ron Carter and Billy Higgins, and I, and I was trying to find the best piano in Los Angeles to record on, to, to have this group come together and record. So I went to a, a dozen different studios trying different pianos out. And then I met up with the producer later that day and he said to me, where have you been all day? And I just blurted out, well, I was out rounding up the usual suspects, meaning checking out all the pieces. That's a great title for an album, let's use that. <laughs> and that's how it came about. That's how it came about. Now, how was the, I know there was something called Something Like a Tree, Talk Like a Tree by John Coltrane when you did an album with him? Well, it, it's a cut off an album called I Talk to the Trees, which, which is what the original recording was sort of associated with that cut, but it, it has since been reissued a couple of times, and I think it's now, the album is now called uh, Like Sunny. It's a, Anyway, that's so. I'm I'm still on I'm still on there, miss with my name misspelled, which it was always misspelled in the early days when nobody knew. So people would spell it J O H N automatically, just like they assume. M E Y E R and M A H E R and all kinds of stuff. So I just okay, whatever. You're just gonna make you somebody else. Huh? Yeah. Well, I, they still misspell my name, but that's okay. Now, in your body of work, 
I know you've been working a long time. You don't have to really do social media or anything like that. But with this thing called social media, this, would, would that be an application that works for people that are established like yourself? Um, I don't see that you really need it. You already have a solid fan base. But in the, let's just say in support of social media, have you been intimidated by social media at all? Is it a challenge for you? Uh, yes, twice, yes. What happened? What happened? I was intimidated. <laughs> That's what happened. Uh, maybe there's a, a streak of laziness, too. I, I don't want to confront uh, all of the... Uh, the people? Not the people. It's, it's uh, doing, doing the mechanical work of getting the stuff moving from one platform to another and figuring out, you know... Yeah, I'm, I'm on Facebook, but I don't have a big fan page or anything like that. People can find me if they want to. It's kind of like Shangri-La. You, 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 if, you, if, if you can find it, you deserve to be there. <laughs> That's very funny. Now, what does it take to, what kind of skills are different or that one must have to play the piano versus playing any of the other instruments? This is a trick question, right? No, this is a question I want to know. If I had an answer to that uh, in 10 seconds or even 10 minutes, I'd, I'd be a very rich man. Um, you know what? I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You know, you need some good, you need some good fingers. You need, you need, I think you just need to love the instrument that much. I think that everybody's drawn to their particular instrument. Um, I mean, I work with the greatest you know, players on each instrument. Uh, saxophonist, Ernie Watts, uh, Pete Chrisleave, etc. Uh, and many of them started out on different instruments. In fact, Pete Chrisleave started out as a violinist. I don't know if you know who Pete is, but um, but now he's Doing something else. Saxophone, and I'm definitely piano. And uh, I know I, I know my way around the, the, the keyboard. Now, in your bio, it talks about. You said you like to capture, let me quote it, the emotional range of who you are, your music when you're playing the piano. What's it like captivating an emotional range of the people you're trying to get to hear what your fingers are saying to us? Well, it's a very mysterious process, isn't it? It's, um, cause when, I, it when you come down to the Desert Rose, which you all need to do, um, you may notice that when I'm playing, I'm on the keyboard, uh, my eyes are mostly closed. I don't look at anything. I, I'm, I'm sort of in a, in a zone. And uh, by now, I don't need to look at the keys to, to play. Well, you feel them, don't you? Well, I know. They kind of find your fingers. Yeah, they, that's right. They find my fingers, right. And, and I try to make each new, each time out, a, a new... A new, a new encounter with with a particular song and and uh, and with a particular band and uh, try not to get uh, repetitive and predictable and uh, so basically I like to work without a net. He likes to work without a net and not the internet either. You guys, that's not what he's talking about. <laughs> what out of all of the famous people you've worked with and geez, we named some earlier. Who has been, have you been most inspired by, if not all of them? Well, it's a pretty good group of people, and uh, I certainly was inspired by John Coltrane in many ways. As a pianist, I'd, I've been influenced by horn players a lot uh, as far as the shape of the lines. Is there any particular reason why? Is it because of the note, how the scales are set up? Or? Yeah, the way, what they're doing uh, is just so fluid active that... that uh, and maybe because I'm an ex-horn player, I, I, I want to get to that space. So uh, they used to talk about Train playing uh, sheets of sound or ribbons of sound. Like a ribbon in the sky? Like a ribbon in the sky. Did Stevie... For our love. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, in any case, um, now Sarah Vaughan was somebody that I kind of worshipped as a kid uh, growing up with Sarah Vaughan. Never think I'd ever work, play for her. And uh, one of my great memories uh, was in uh, 1952, which is pre 
before electricity, right? Um, I, I used to go to the New York Paramount every uh, every Saturday morning. They had uh, before one o'clock fifty-five cents to get in for the stage show and the movie. And this particular stage show was uh, all black, Illinois jacket, big band, Stump and Stumpy, Teddy Hale, and Sarah Vaughan was the headliner. And so I, I just sat there in the sixth row, whatever it was, and just looked up and, and was transfixed by, by the divine one, Sarah Vaughan. And then uh, I was asked to join her little troupe uh, it was a dream come true. It was, it was really the, the most fun gig I ever had. You were there to see them. So how did they discover that you were you in the audience? Did they call your name Many out? Years later. Oh, okay. I was a little kid in the audience. I was a grown up when they asked me to. Was and you became like a follower of these people and then they noticed, you know, you kind of hung around? No, no. I just, you, know, you asked, how did I get a, a particular job? I knew a guy who knew a guy who knew a guy who knew me. And then, you know. It was called networking. Networking. I knew there was a word that, uh, that uh, is pure networking. And that's how life works, is, is uh, get touched. And Ms. Vaughn, she's like, her whole voice is an instrument in itself. I mean, I know she was one of my dad's favorites. I mean, he just says, jazz stops with Sarah. That's what he said. Yeah, yeah there's, there's very little that happened after that that's worth noting. But uh, occasionally I'll hear someone who will revisit this sort of magical territory and uh, very few singers around now that can make the magic happen. Uh, I don't want to sound like an old fogey, but that's how I feel. You don't sound like an old fogey. You don't look like an old fogey. You just have been someone that has had experience. But what the other thing is that now in over time, you've done a lot of music. What are you currently doing now? I mean, I noticed that, you know, I looked at your videos. I think you did something in Paris at the Appetit de Chat or something like that in Paris. Oh, uh, you don't have to remember it. My goodness. Uh, um, yeah. Oshaki Pesh. That's it. That's it. Oshaki Pesh on the left bank here. That was a long time ago. But how was it working there? I mean, was that your first trip out of the country to Paris or? Uh, actually, it pr I pretty much was. And uh, it was the summer of 59. And uh, it was the same summer that Bud Powell was, was living down the street. A lot of musicians over there got to, in fact, I worked opposite Bud for the whole summer. We, we alternated. And Recording? Yeah. yeah. And uh, so being in Paris at any time is pretty, pretty sensational. But that, as a young, what was I, 18 or so? Uh, Falling in love wherever I could, you know. <laughs> well, you must have fallen in love because it says you're now happily married. Oh, yeah. Well, that took a while. It took a lot of work. A lot of Do you think it's hard for musicians to find partners with all the commitment that goes along with music? As a matter of fact, I do. I, I do. You need to find exactly <laughs> someone who will put up with your stuff. You know. Your music stuff. Yeah. And, and, and assorted other stuff that comes, you know, with the baggage and the, my strange history and uh, my misbehaviors and correcting myself and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm very lucky to uh, have finally landed on my feet with, with the uh, current and, and who introduces herself as the final Mrs. Mayor. The final Mrs. Mayor. That means she's the one. Now, I know in your bio it mentions something about 13 years of an absence. Now, I don't want to delve into why the whatever happened, but I do want to say what brought you back? Was there where, where there was one moment that said, I need to go back into doing what I was doing? Well, I had fell, fallen into a rabbit hole to, 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 make, to make it brief. Uh, uh, sort of like a matrix? Yeah, like a matrix uh, with all kinds of substances surrounding myself. And so I forgot how to how to get to the piano. I hadn't touched the piano in 15 years or 13 years, whatever it was. And uh, I actually got on a plane out here to Los Angeles around 91 or 90 and uh, I said, I need to uh, solve my life. And I uh, found myself into a sober living facility and got very lucky because the people that connected to it were ex-musicians and, <laughs> and uh, I said, oh, yeah, you come over here and there's a jam session and that, and it very slowly, slowly, 
again. Started to pick up. How did I get from that day to where, wherever day? It's, it's always an interesting question. Is how, how did we get here? Well, living. A lot of things preceded it. And, and, and like I said, we are more. What are you doing now? How, how do you think? What is called jazz these days? I mean, we've got this is jazz to us, but there's a whole other thing they're calling jazz. And then with everyone, you know, um, with people slowly progressing into new territories of music, especially with technology and experimenting with Pro 2 sounds and all that. What do you what do you think? How can we say jazz is evolving? Well, it's become, as you said, many, many and sundry, you know, forms. Um, you know, I represent or try to represent um, a particular era and a particular way of doing things. I'm still, basically, I'm, I'm still learning. I'm on a learning curve. Uh, I haven't, you know, finished my, my journey of figuring out how to take standard repertoire and make it irresistible the way some of my heroes used to do. And, uh, but there are these other generations, younger, and uh, access to, uh, to technology, yes, uh, electronics, this, that, and the other thing. But um, there's always going to be the next thing and uh, fusing uh, one kind of music with another kind of music. And you have world music and you have the Afro this and that. Um, there's a zillion. But, you know, what used to be jazz festivals, used to be and are still called jazz festivals really are no longer jazz festivals. You're more like R&B aren't they? Uh, pop and R&B and, and, and this, so some of it sort of crosses over into jazzy kind of you know uh, stuff so they're very, it's very hard to find what I play is generally uh, uh, del, del, uh, talked about as straight ahead jazz uh -huh. For one, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of a better term. Uh, you, it's it's very hard to find straight ahead jazz in any particular festival. So it's 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 challenging to get booked. Believe me. In, in I bet it is, especially if you play authentic music. I would think. Yeah. The uh, the audience is getting um, more refined and slimmer, slimming down. Let's just say. Now we're coming to the end of our show. But I want to know, out of all of the people that are out now, do you know anyone that you can say, I've got hope for jazz because of what they're doing? Do you know anyone like that? Well, there's, some, there's, a, <laughs> there's a 12 or 13-year-old kid playing. Do you know the name of the kid? Uh, uh, yeah, Dad. Of course, I don't, can't think of his name. But it's okay. Who, who I'm talking about. What kind of instrument? It's piano. Okay. And he's been on a lot of... Um, TV shows. And I know who you're talking about. That's right. This kid is remarkable. He's from like Indonesia or something like that. He's 12 or 13 or maybe he's 14. As old as 14. Uh, but he's a very old soul and he's evolving very quickly. So yeah, keep hope alive. So we have some hope in jazz. Now, we're about to come to the end of our show, so people, the audience out there, you can find Mr. John Mayer, that's J-O-N-M-A-Y-E-R.com for his Facebook page. He doesn't have to be all over the net because he does networking and seems to be able to get around. Also, you are going to be performing at? The Desert Rose at 1700 North Hillhurst Avenue. In Los Desert Rose, 1700 North Hillhurst Avenue. In Los Feliz. In Los Feliz. Los okay, and how long are you going to be there? Forever. Um, <laughs> I'm there every. I've been there every Saturday night for five years, and, unless I'm somewhere else making some real money. And um, uh, there's a, it's a trio, piano, bass, and drums, and the food is excellent. And uh, seven to eleven every Saturday. Come on down. Okay, so seven to eleven every Saturday. You can experience. Be there or be square. Be, and be there or be square, like the man said, or be round, it's whether way you want to fit. But just so you know, this is live, authentic music, people. They don't make this kind of music anymore, and I know that the technology seems very possible, but this music has been around. It's still here. I can't say that the, some of the music we hear today will be around in the next 40, 50 years, but this is a test of time, Mr. John Mayer. Again, this man is somebody you want to know. He is an authentic jazz pianist, came from New York City. That's why he's still so cool and hip. 
So for those of you that haven't gone to our channel, this has been Osiris again with 15 Minutes with Mr. John Mayer. Thank you, Osiris, very much for this slot that you've offered me. Oh, you are doing a wonderful job. So those of you, go to my channel. Don't forget to subscribe to 15 Minutes on YouTube. You can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn, whatever you want to find. We're everywhere. And we'll see you next time, okay? Be there at B-Square. Over and out. Bye. Say bye. bye. I'm going to see ya. See ya.